Arthritis is the degeneration of a joint over time. Well, I'm Paul Tugut. I'm one of the orthopedic surgeons here at San Francisco General Hospital. I am a trauma surgeon, which means I take care of injured patients, but I'm also a joint replacement surgeon, which means I help people with arthritis, specifically of their hips and their knees. A joint is any place where two bones come together and the caps or the ends of those bones is covered with cartilage. And cartilage is a special tissue for two reasons. Number one, it's a very smooth tissue uh, that moves past each other with very low friction. And number two, it's a tissue that doesn't have any nerve endings in it. And so when those two pieces of cartilage at a joint move past each other, there is generally no feeling at all experienced by a person. Arthritis is the loss of that cartilage at the ends of bones. And so when you lose cartilage, what remains is the two bones themselves rubbing together. And unfortunately, bone has neither of the two qualities that cartilage does. It is not a smooth surface, it's a rough surface. And also, it is a surface that has many nerve endings in it. And unfortunately, when rough surfaces in the body rub past each other, people sense that as pain. So there are multiple causes of arthritis. So again, arthritis is just a generic term, which means destruction of the joint, uh, but there are multiple things that can cause destruction of the joint. So the most common cause of arthritis is osteoarthritis. Uh, and what that term means is that all of us over time experience a slow degeneration of the joint simply from the use of those joints. The more we use those joints and the longer we use those joints, the tread on our joints, just like the tread on the tire, can go away. And that's what osteoarthritis essentially is. It's a mechanical process that occurs over time for all of us. So another common cause of arthritis is inflammatory arthritis. So whereas we think of osteoarthritis as mostly a mechanical phenomenon, inflammatory arthritis occurs in an individual who has more inflammation in their body than normal. When there's a lot of inflammation in a joint, it can lead to the destruction of that joint over time more rapidly than we would normally expect. Common examples of inflammatory arthritis would be rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis associated with psoriasis, and also ankylosing spondylitis, which which is a form of, again, systemic inflammation that tends to affect uh, young men. Rheumatoid arthritis most commonly affects young women. So whereas osteoarthritis typically affects anyone over a certain age, rheumatoid arthritis typically is first noticed in women in their 20s, 30s, 40s, and if left untreated can affect multiple joints in their body quite rapidly. The primary symptom of arthritis of any type is pain. So patients who come to our clinic with arthritis, almost always their number one complaint is pain in the knee or pain in the hip. And again, that is shared by arthritis regardless of the cause. Other symptoms that people might notice is they may notice a subtle deformity of the limb. So people with arthritis of the knee in particular can notice that they may be becoming more bow-legged or more knock feed slowly over time. Patients will also complain of stiffness, so a lack of motion at the joint as compared to what it was prior to the development of, our, of their arthritis. Patients will also sometimes notice with hip arthritis a leg length discrepancy, which means they'll actually notice that the leg that is affected by their arthritis can be slightly short compared to the other side that does not have that problem. Arthritis in all of its forms is not a disease that we can stop, and it's not a disease that we can completely halt the progression. Uh, it is fortunately a disease that despite its progression, we can symptomatically control, usually for a long period of time, before major interventions have to be undertaken. Most pain is self-limiting. So if you stub your toe on the way out the door, that pain resolves. The pain with arthritis, unfortunately, is not like that. It does not spontaneously go away, and that's because the disease itself does not spontaneously go away. So arthritis, unfortunately, slowly gets worse and worse over time, and people's symptoms in general get worse and worse over time. So the treatment of arthritis is basically into two buckets. There is non-operative management and then there's surgery. 
The reason we usually start with non-operative treatment is because it is very low risk. Common non-operative treatments for arthritis include activity modification, which is a fancy way of saying just avoiding activities that bother it. Uh, so if going up and down stairs is particularly troublesome, uh, patients can do simple things like finding an escalator or finding an elevator if that's a possibility. Besides activity modification, there are also common medications that are used for the treatment of arthritis. Uh, these are things that are available over the counter without a prescription from a physician. Uh, and these include uh, anti-inflammatory medications like Advil, naproxen, ibuprofen, and then also Tylenol. Uh, in addition to medications, other things that patients will frequently try uh, are braces, uh, particularly around the knee to help stabilize that joint that can provide some people with some relief and also physical therapy. Physical therapy doesn't reverse the process of arthritis, but it can strengthen the muscles and the tendons around the joint, and that can provide people with some symptomatic relief. The final non-operative treatment that we have in our arsenal are steroid injections. Steroid injections basically take a large dose of anti-inflammatory medication and put it right where it's needed in the joint, and that can provide people with several weeks to several months of quite effective pain relief. So the decision to have surgery is one that is really made by the patient, although the physicians certainly will guide them to an appropriate choice. The primary driver of when to have surgery is not how good or bad an x-ray looks, it's how severe the patient's symptoms are, uh, again specifically pain, and how well that's being managed with non-operative treatment. So if someone still feels like they're able to do most of their activities and function at a high level with non-operative management, then we continue on with non-operative management. However, most people will get to a point over time where they find their symptoms intolerable, whatever that means to them. They're unable to do the things that they want to do, function at the level that they want to function, despite attempting non-operative management. And that's the point where we start to talk to them about the risks and benefits of surgery and whether or not a surgery would be the correct option for them.